Hello and welcome to On The Table. I'm your host, Otto Othman. With the all-new RTM ASEAN Blanc, we're broadcasting on RTM Click and MyTV's Brita RTM channel, which is also live streaming on YouTube. tonight's episode in the next 30 minutes we'll be embarking on the heroic journey of our guest in numerous operations against the communist insurgency for which he was bestowed Malaysia's highest award for bravery the Darja Kebesaran Sri Pahlawan Gaga Perkasa we welcome to the studio superintendent retired Dato Paul Kyung now it's an honor Dato thank you very much for coming to the studio now without further ado Dato as a recipient of Malaysia's highest gallantry award uh, can you share with us the story behind your act of bravery and heroism that led to this prestigious re recognition? Uh, good day, everybody. Uh, I'm very happy and it's an honor to have been invited to ITM uh, for this session. Yes, I was awarded the highest gallantry award for Malaysia back in 1983. Now, uh, getting this award, uh, I had to undergo a lot of uh, uh, covert operations uh, mounted against the Communist Party of Malaya. That is, the uh, insurgent units that are based in many states like Kuda, Perak, Selangor, and Pahang. So uh, during those uh, early 70s, until even late 80s, I was directly involved in uh, many covert operations, especially in Paris State. So during these covert, covert operations uh, undertaken by the Special Branch, uh, Para. I was directly involved, and uh, we had to be infiltrated. Rather, we penetrated the militant unit in the jungle and the underground units in the urban areas of Perak State. Now, following that infiltration and the penetration, uh, we managed to, to obtain a lot of valuable uh, intelligence on the movements, on the uh, firearms that they're having, how they operate, who are the contacts were. So uh, in that process uh, of infiltration, involves a lot of high risk. And whatever it is, we have to penetrate them. Otherwise, without uh, accurate intelligence, we cannot mount any operations to, to fight the communist insurgents. So what uh, happened was, I was trained and I had the knowledge of how the uh, communist insurgents work. And uh, I penetrated that into their networking, the underground network, as well as the logistic uh, networking. Yeah. Now, during that time, uh, Back in the mid 70s, that was the height of the communist insurgency, where the communist people, the, the, the militants uh, underground and the militants in the jungle were fighting a war against our security forces and our police special branch. Hmm. So my role was then and tasked to three 
and uh, important tasking. One is to supply food to the insurgents or as a food supplier. Number two, as a messenger, to convey letters from one group to another group. And my third tasking was to ferry them, you no, know, as a as a taxi driver, so to say, from one point to another point uh, during uh, the, the 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 night, and uh, fully armed in my car from one point to another point. So all these three tasking uh, actually involves. Uh, very high risk, and uh, as I was trained for this job, I was very confident. Even though it's high risk, I believe that I'd be able to achieve uh, success. For example, in the supply of food to the militant in the jungle. Mm -hmm. Now, they will come out with a list forward to our source. And in turn, the source will come and contact us and show us that this is the food list that they want. OK? So after starting the food list, we will send in whatever we think. We means the police and the spiritual branch thinks that that should be supplied. For example, now if they want uh, 10 bags of rice, 10 kilos of sugar, 10 bottles of cooking oil, yeah, etc., etc. Now, we are not going to supply all of what they wanted according to their food list. So we cut down their, their requirements. Why do we do that? Because the whole idea, the whole strategy is not to feed them. The whole strategy is to starve them. See? Deprive them of the food supply. Make them go hungry. Right? Now, in this world, no soldier, whether in the jungle or in any war, no soldier, a hungry soldier cannot fight a war. That is part of logistic that uh, they require. So uh, from this angle, by cutting the food supply, we deprive them the food that they require for a duration, perhaps three weeks. After three weeks, they will come back to us again to resupply. So the whole idea is we make them to contact us more frequently. The more frequent you contact us, the better it is for us. We can see what firearms you're carrying, who are coming out to carry the food from the jungle fringe, where we supply them, especially during the night. Right? So uh, food supply, we will uh, give them according to uh, what we think they should be given. Yeah. The same thing applies to medication. They, say, they ask for a lot of malaria pills. Then we know that some of them are suffering from malaria. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then we know that it's good when they are sick, for all the sickness they have, when they are sick, that will empower them from moving speedily in the jungle. That will hold them back. They have to look after the sick in the jungle. That is on the medication side. Now, coming to the other tasking as a messenger. So they trusted me. asking me to deliver letters 
from A group to B group, for example. So I will take hold of the letter from A group, directed by them to pass it on to B group to a certain point in the jungle area. That is my tasking. And the process of taking the letter to B, of course, we will open up the letter. And uh, we will know what is the contents of the letter. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are one step ahead in this uh, area. And we know what they're going to do and what uh, they are planning uh, to the, through the letters in the communication. And then we will close back the letter without them knowing that it has been already opened. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because once they suspect that uh, you are considered a traitor uh, to them, mm -hmm. uh, which they have trusted you so much, then of course, they will, they will kill you. Okay? Okay, that's so that will be a very top secret. And uh, the other thing is, uh, tasking the last one is normally uh, conveying of uh, armed communist insurgents from point A to point B, mm -hmm. yeah? Fully armed and in my car. They're sitting in my car, of course, during the night. So now the risk is also very high. But along the way, what happens if you are stopped by a police patrol car or you're stopped by policemen at a roadblock, the communists inside the car will shoot first. Wow. When they shoot the policemen at the roadblock or in the patrol car, and what happens then? There'll be a firefight. The policemen will again uh, return fire into the car, and you being the driver, you'll be caught in the crossfire. Mm -hmm. And of course, you, uh, you are not going to shoot your own men, is it? Yeah. Ah, so what are you going to do? The policeman doesn't know you. And you die together with them. But that is the risk that you have to take. But so far, Dato, you have not been uh, infiltrated by your own, uh, by your own uh, security forces, right? No. Or was there any instances where that happened? Uh, in what way that the security forces uh, are involved? Yeah, like uh, was there any uh, incidents whereby that happened during your service? Yeah, uh, during the service, I was lucky in the sense that uh, before I carry out any tasking, for example, for supplying uh, and uh, conveying of these armed cities in my car, I always do a recce first to find out that there is no roadblock and uh, the route from point A to point B is quite safe. Uh, in terms of roadblock, uh, there's no roadblock on that area. Yeah? Now again, uh, coming back to logistics, the tricky part is when you're supplying food supply to them. They will ask you, why ask for 10 bags of rice? You're only giving us two bags of rice. They will suspect you why you're cutting down our food supply. Now, you must have a good cover story uh, from that angle. Mm -hmm. Right? Then you have to explain to them that, uh, oh, if I'm going to carry 10 bags of rice, as of according to uh, what you wanted, according to the full list that you sent to us, I think my old man, uh, I think the suspension will sink down. And uh, in that process of traveling on the road, if there's any police patrol car when you see that kind of situation, yeah, they will stop your car. They will ah. stop your, 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 your van. Yeah, your, your, your uh, borough in your van, see? And then when they check you, of course, they find so much of food supply in the van, of course, you'll be arrested. You'll then, find suspicion. Uh, you'll, uh, you'll be suspected mm -hmm. as a food supplier, and uh, you'll, be sub uh, you'll be arrested. And then, of course, you tell them, do you want me to be arrested? If I'm arrested, who is going to supply you the food? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you throw it back to them. Yeah. And then, of course, they will not uh, force an issue that uh, 
no, you must give us. Yeah. So they also were very sympathetic to the uh, supplier or the food the supplier, and uh, they do want them to be arrested as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So on this call, the cover story must be able to hold, yep. and they will not suspect you. And uh, sometimes uh, 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 they wanted the food supply to be delivered on a certain date. But we, our strategy, we will have uh, to postpone it. Mm -hmm. We will delay it. Now, for example, they want it on the 10th of April. We are not going to deliver on the 10th of April. We will deliver it on the 25th of April. Mm -hmm. So when we de delay the, the delivery, that means they are undergoing a lot of hunger. They're suffering from hunger. They're deprived of food. You see, so we will do it uh, with uh, uh, intention, uh, design to uh, force them to break the morale. Mm. Yeah. So when they don't have a food, yeah, they expected or on a ten, I'm expecting a food coming, but nothing is coming. So they will undergo again half staff. Yeah. So when they undergo this kind of suffering, uh, I think that will have a have an impact on the morale. It's a huge impact, Dato, yes, definitely. Impact. All right, Dato. Um, unfortunately, uh, we are going to go for a short break mm. and we'll delve more further into this issue as well as with regards also with uh, your your thoughts on the national, on how being, how does it mean, what does it mean to be uh, patriotic, patriotism and all that. So stick around. We'll be back with uh, retired superintendent Dato Paul Kiong in just a bit. Stick around. Celebration of National Month and Malaysia Day 2024. Come and join us to witness the parade for National Day at Dataran Putrajaya on 31st August 2024, Saturday at 7.30 a.m. Saluran Brita at MyTV123 and TVOK will bring you an exclusive live broadcast of National Day 2024 featuring a variety of exciting programs. Malaysia Madani, Jiwa Merdeka. Welcome back to On the Table. Today, we're joined with a very special guest, the very, very distinguished guest, and very honored to be here with us. I am together with Superintendent Retired Dato Paul Kiong with regards to today's topic. Now, Dato, thank you very much once again. And uh, we'd like to continue our conversation with uh, this question over here, Dato. Now, how has receiving this national award impacted your life and also inspired you to continue this journey that you are going on right now? Well, uh, having uh, received the highest gallantry award, uh, of course, I feel very proud of it, uh, that I've served the country well. And, uh, and uh, it has a strong impact on me in a way that uh, I felt that uh, now uh, whatever it is, uh, peace and harmony does not come in uh, e so easily. So we have to go for it, we have to fight for it, to obtain it. Okay. So uh, sacrifices from the veterans uh, have to be uh, carried out, yeah, whether uh, in covert operations or non-covert operations. But in my case, I felt that the impact is great, that uh, finally the, 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 the peace and the security of the country have been achieved. Yeah. I feel that uh, the people can go about living a normal life uh, nothing to fear. There will be uh, no upper uh, uh, instability in the, from the security aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I felt that uh, our country now, uh, mm. the war has come to an end. Uh, our national budget uh, can be put to uh, the economic field mm -hmm. of development. And then uh, at the same time, I think uh, more investors will come in uh, to the country to invest and that will uh, have a better impact on, on the economy. Now, Dato, now that you've seen what has happened before and now, is it what you imagined so far um, when you were in service to now? Was it 
what you imagined, how it would be being free and uh, without any uh, security issues and being you know, at war. When I was serving the time uh, fighting the war, there was a vision yeah, for me that uh, my vision is that I always uh, aspire and hope that our country uh, will come uh, to be at peace yeah, at a faster pace yeah, rather than to drag on uh, this sort of uh, 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 war, which I think uh, is causing a lot of uh, impact on our security forces. They are causing a lot of injury, uh, uh, death uh, uh, to our people. And then, of course, innocent people are also being killed. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I was thinking that uh, it's good that uh, we sacrifice whatever we can uh, and uh, try to bring the war to an end at a mm -hmm. faster rate, rather than to drag on and on and on. Yeah. So uh, I had, uh, of course, the vision that it would be <laughs> very nice if I can bring it to a faster end which uh, finally it was achieved. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel uh, a sense of satisfaction. Now, Dato, okay, we were talking off air with regards to uh, your uh, whole life and career. Uh, Dato has been uh, in the uh, forefront of the uh, communist regime for six years. And uh, before even joining this, the service, you were uh, applying for other, uh, other positions as well. So could you go us through that part of your life before becoming uh, who you are today? Yeah. Uh, uh, during my school days, uh, <clears throat> I was very active. I'm an active person. I like outdoor activities, yeah? And, uh, and, uh, and before I finished my uh, Form 5, I've already made up my mind that I, I'm not going to take on any desk job. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, a four to five, uh, eight to five in your desk job. Uh, I think uh, that is not my my cup of tea. You see? So I retold myself that I want to uh, have a job uh, that is uh, uh, keep me moving, and uh, and I love uh, the outdoor. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the crazy idea came to me, and I saw an advertisement. Uh, we can see that existing in uh, Nairobi uh, wow. to be a game ranger. Yeah? So I applied for it, but uh, unfortunately, uh, I, there was no reply from them. But uh, I did not give up hope. I applied to the RMAF. I applied to the Royal Customs, and I applied uh, to join the PDRM. So. Uh, mm -hmm. Eventually, PDRM replied early. <laughs> <laughs> and for good reason. Uh, I don't <laughs> no, know. We wouldn't have you. So I, I took yes. on the job first. I said, OK, good. Uh, I went for my training. And during my training, then the letter from uh, RMF came and the Royal Customs came. Of course, uh, uh, there was a rejection from my part. Yeah. So that's how I landed up in the PDRM. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I felt that uh, I have no regrets there. Yeah. Uh, is uh, very suitable for me, and uh, and I fit in well, and uh, I love my job. That's a one opportunity which people uh, tend to forget as well. Um, you need to know where you want to go from the very beginning, get go, to know where your journey is. Now, without further ado, uh, Dato, because we don't have much time, now as we celebrate Malaysia's National Day, what is your message you'd like to uh, convey to the younger generation? Well, my advice to younger generation is to uh, be more resolute, resolute in your work, whatever you do. I think uh, they should uh, uh, be more disciplined, yeah, and uh, try to aspire, yeah, uh, to do your best in whatever field of work you are in, and uh, try to, I think, uh, Join in into uh, the scope of nation building. You see? Mm -hmm. uh, the young people must aspire to aim high yeah? and uh, try to contribute to the country in, a, in whatever way, like in the economic, uh, in the economic field, mm -hmm. be creative mm -hmm. yeah? 
uh, discipline and uh, you must exercise a lot of uh, integrity and trust. Yeah? And of course, uh, the love and the patriotism for the country uh, must not fade away. Yeah. Yeah? And then uh, the, the kind of uh, uh, loving one another, tolerance uh, with one another, especially when we are a multiracial society, we cannot break uh, uh, within ranks, within, within our ranks, of our racial ranks, and uh, we must stay united at all Definitely. times. Definitely. Yeah? Sure. Through the thick and thin, we must fight. If there is any threat to our country, we must offer our service. That's what we have done, and we will continue uh, to do it, and I will give uh, the advice that uh, the young people must, uh, in the first place, before you have patriotism, you must love your country. Now, Dato, uh, before we let you go, one last question. How can the ordinary Malaysian contribute to the country, in your own thoughts? In my own way, I think uh, the, the ordinary citizen should uh, more or less uh, try to, not go into difficult times, yeah. Uh, I think they should try to, uh, with the prudent the spending, uh, uh, pay more attention and uh, I think trying to make the economy work and try to buy our own products, yeah, buy our own products. And the, 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 the own, our own people, our citizens, uh, should be able to stand firm and uh, uh, follow what uh, leadership have uh, dished out for us uh, in terms of uh, improving our economic status and uh, to, be, uh, to be together as one. Yeah? and to stay united and, and, uh, and hopefully that uh, they bring up the children uh, to a better education mm -hmm. yeah so that uh, they can excel in whatever whatever field they want yeah and then in the, in the end of it the children will be able to contribute to our nation building well, thank you very much, Dato, for all that. Uh, we just like to let's summarize uh, what you have just said, uh, Dato. From all the things that uh, you have explained from the very beginning, it was a very graphic and detailed experience to our viewers. Definitely, um, what I can gather is do your very best in whatever you're doing. Do good for the nation, as uh, how Dato has been experiencing through thick and thin six years within the regime of uh, the communist uh, regime, and all he thought was looking at Malaysia at a better place. So, Dato, thank you very much for you know, coming to the studio once again. I hope that we can have this conversation off air as well with all your experiences. Yes. And believe me, Dato has lots of stories that he can share, but unfortunately, we do not have time. And that's all about the time we've got for On the Table this evening. I've been talking to the nation's legendary policeman, Superintendent Retired Dato Paul Kiong. A repeat of this episode's broadcast can be viewed again at the same time tomorrow and subsequent days on both RTM Click and also My TV's Brita RTM channel, which is also live streaming on YouTube. Now, till next Thursday, all right, we'll have more discussions on topics of interest. I'm Otto Othman, signing off. Good night.